Thou servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. and whether or not someone could receive the mark of the beast and then become a believer. You remember that? Uh-huh. Do you remember the controversy that stirred up? Yes. It was quite a bit, wasn't it? It was. I got a lot of emails, people saying, I can't believe he would say such a thing. You remember all that? Yes, sir, I do. All right. Well, I was walking April the other night listening to a Q&A uh, from a few years ago uh, where Pete John MacArthur on a Wednesday night lets, would have folks in his congregation stand up and go to the microphone and shoot questions at him. Would you like to hear the question he was asked and his answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. As in regard to the about a half of the tribulation period, when, when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell, my question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, in the seven-year tribulation coming in the future, we're going to get into this so probably a week from Sunday night, maybe this Sunday night, maybe a week, I'm not sure. But um, the tribulation is a seven-year period, right? The rapture of the church, seven-year tribulation, then Christ returns, sets up his kingdom. Now, in that seven-year period, really two things happen. God begins to judge the world with, with a series of holocausts, and at the same time, he begins to redeem his people, Israel. And in the process of this, the Antichrist establishes his rule, and in order to function in the economy of the Antichrist, you have to take the mark of the beast. Uh, the mark being the number of a man, Revelation 13, 666, 6 is the number of man, right? 7 is the number of perfection, and man always falls short of perfection. 666, always 6 is never 7. So the number of a man. And apparently what's going to happen, you take the mark on your hand or on your forehead. And we've talked a lot about that, you know, that, uh, that that's kind of the computer situation. We're now moving fast toward the time when we're going to have to do everything we do by cards and by numbers and all of that. And uh, uh, those numbers, the thing about a card that's a problem is you lose it and they've already devised systems to put the number on your hand and on your forehead and you go through a scanner and, then, you know, that's how you buy and sell. It's automatically deducted from your bank account. Now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, Will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes. Otherwise, there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. And you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation. You're going to have the Jews redeemed. You're going to have, according to Revelation chapter 7, an innumerable number of Gentiles redeemed, so many they can't even be counted across the face of the earth. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to, a, to permanency any more than you... Being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. Well, especially when the 144,000 don't start their ministry till the second half. Yeah, that's true. That make it a little tough. Well, there you go, Dr. DeYoung. <laughs> well, we're looking at the same book. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what's so interesting, and that's what we were saying. I mean, you know, that's not the impartable sin. You've got to be... I, I just thought that... I, I've never... Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation 
answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was at hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked. So answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee at hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Thank <laughs> you. 
which is shed for the many, for the remission of sins. When I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the mouth of olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended to thee. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this come pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I do. As thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, Except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Jesus to the multitudes. Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and 